Hi, this is Jeff Liu, and uh, I want to uh, chip in my opinion uh, in this lesson on this uh, car and house debate. Uh, you know, this car and a buy a car first or a buy a house first debate has been going on forever. And you you see that uh, a lot of people, uh, including myself, when I just started out, I say that oh, car is just you know a depreciating asset. You shouldn't buy a car, or even you know buy a cheap car, and that's why you should always buy a house first because there is always uh, appreciating in value. And you know, uh, you know, I have seen articles from you know written by even property developers who say that yeah, I mean that is the house ownership, and that is what all of us want a home. Now, actually, the the after so many years in you know financial advisory, actually the question, the answer to this question is not so straightforward, uh, because there are certain exceptions to that. And today, I want you, I don't want to 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 actually give you what you already know, which is basically to tell you you should buy a car first, which what uh, everyone is against about, and you should buy a house first, which everyone advocate. Uh, I would say that it is not as simple. And before actually considering this, you should buy neither of these. Here's why. Okay, so the the first thing is, why should you buy a car? Um, the car you should buy a car, provided this is true. The car should generate a good return for you. And let me give you an example. Um, you know that in the insurance agency, they always uh, tell people to say that uh, the moment you kind of make it and you can afford, let's say, a BMW or Mercedes, that is why you should buy a car. Why is that? It's because they say that if you buy a nice car, when you come go and see your clients, then there's a certain status, there's a certain uh, status that represent by having a car that costs you hundred, two hundred, or even three hundred thousand. So, which which that makes sense. And in the early days, a lot of people, even myself included, to say that oh, this this is stupid. I mean, you should you know, insurance agent buy a car. But, but that that is actually not a prudent financial management. But what? They don't. A lot of people don't realize it. Maybe this insurance agent or whatnot, they operate in a market where they can only do business when you they drive a nice car. So you know, business, you know, you generate income, and for them buying that car, you get them more business. So in that sense, there's more return of investment over there. So the car is yes, it's a depreciating asset from accounting standpoint. Sorry, accountants. But from a business standpoint, it make it might make sense. Now, it does not make sense if by driving a nice car, it it doesn't give you give get you any you know uh, significantly uh, higher or better business. Then that is actually a diminishing return. So if by buying a nice car, it generates you more return, or even buying a helicopter or buying a private jet, it actually uh, save you time and generate you more return. Why not? I mean, just go go and buy a car. Right, and this the, the the other thing is now we're done about talking about the car. I give you an example already. Let's talk about buying a house. Okay, maybe buy a car. Yes, you should buy a car if there is a return of investment. There's a good ROI out of that. How about buying a house? Now you see that house is something that um, as you know as Asian as someone who are Asian you know Chinese Malay or Indian whatever so it always say to say you have need to have a house because that is your home and some people go to the extent to say that you should not buy a home because you should buy a property because you buy the five investment property and then that will lead you to the six property maybe then you only buy a home so there is a flaw in this uh, analogy or in, in this thought is that it depends on what you are doing. If you are looking to actually say that uh, you have a nice career and then you have decided you get married, you, you want to have kids, you want to raise a family, you are settling down in a certain place, then it might make more sense uh, to buy a home when you already happen to settle down and you have a stable career or business. Now, that makes sense and you have like 
income and all that. What it does not make sense is that now imagine uh, if you're a startup founder, which I want to write over here. So if you are starting a business, right, maybe internet, a software business or whatnot, you know that that actually kind of uh, require a lot of money. Now, when you're a startup founder, it is so, so terrible, such a terrible idea to actually buy a house because the house is going to drag you down because as a startup founder or you are starting up your own business, there might be a lot of cash flow involved that you need to invest back in your business for it to grow, you know, hire people and all that. If it's uh, labor intensive or even uh, you need to have goods, you know, your costs and all that. So it might make sense not to buy a house when you are starting up your business because the cash flow can generate higher return just by putting that inside uh, inside back to your business, reinvest that rather than buy in a home that really, you know, the appreciation or whatnot, it does not impact you, doesn't benefit you because you are not going to sell it. So if you're an entrepreneur or you're a startup founder, okay, it makes absolute no sense to buy a home. And the thing is, a lot of, uh, a, a, a lot of people actually may not be agree with me on this, but you don't have to take my inputs. You just look at what uh, a person, which is a Gary, Gary V, which runs a 200 million USD company, say, see what he says about doing something that makes you happy. I think people have to ask themselves, are they actually ha happy eight out of 10 days when they wake up? And if they're not, they need to put pressure on themselves to make themselves realize they're probably not doing what they wanna be doing. I'm getting so passionate about teaching people how to sell their home and go rent so that they can quit a job where they make 200,000 a year so they can take one that makes 89,000 because they'll be happy. And what did you give up? Telling people you own your home? Like, there's a lot of people that are playing happy on social media, but they're not. But I think happiness over everything. Like, the American dream should not be owning a home. The American dream should be to be happy. Obviously, you need chill, you need to pay bills, but you're no longer happy. What, what do you... You need to change your bills. Okay, okay. You need to not buy a fresh fucking hoodie. You yes. may need to move into a shittier apartment. You know, if you're not happy, but you got bills, why don't you look at your bills? You need to go financially backwards or optically backwards, or your flex game's gotta go backwards so that your happiness goes three steps forward. Maybe that Lexus that you have, maybe you trade it back in and get a fucking shitty Toyota. Happiness. Happiness is key. No, dude, it's everything. Corporate job. You work in a corporate job that is a drag, it does not make you happy. You are earning 200,000, 200,000 a year. But yet you know that you have a big audacious goal or ambition to actually start your own business. But you know that uh, you have to take, financially you have to take a few steps back for the first few years so that you can achieve, go back to where you were, earning like 200, 300,000 in your job. So that is where you want to scale down. And it makes absolute no sense, again, according to Gary V, to actually, to actually have your house that is dragging you down. And if you are unhappy in your job, uh, and just you're staying in a job just because you have uh, huge loans or few loans to service, that actually doesn't make sense, okay? And you also want to hear it from a guy which is uh, probably a, a billionaire from now, Grant Cardone, uh, which says something uh, pretty, pretty interesting. Watch what he said. Couple weeks ago. Uh, hope that you find this uh, lesson insightful, the eternal car versus how, which one to buy first, the debate. So uh, I'm safe, Liu, if you, if you feel that uh, you have benefit from this, you feel this entertaining, maybe educational, uh, hit like, uh, comments below, uh, whether you agree, if you agree with what I just said, yes, if you disagree, just type in no, and don't forget, okay, after this screen, you can click on, you know, a subscribe, and you know, keep on watching video, so that click on the notification bell, so you get notified when I publish uh, videos or lessons like this, okay, ciao.